to the United States Army Training Center in Fort Jackson, the retirement review of Sergeant First Class Commander, Sergeant First Class Murdoch, and the graduation of companies Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, and Echo from the 4th Battalion, 39th Infantry Regiment, 165th Infantry Brigade. Please stand for the invocation given by Chaplain Paul Minnie. Let us pray. We are gathered here today in thankfulness. Thankfulness for all that you have provided. Thankfulness that we live in a country that allows us to celebrate achievement, success, and above all, freedom. Freedom to dream, freedom to believe, and freedom to live and fulfill the purpose that you have for us. As we celebrate today's achievements of graduation and retirement, we thank you for all that has brought us here today. And we pray for your guidance and wisdom as we enter the next chapter of our lives. May you bless our way forward. Bless these graduates, these retirees, bless these families, and may God bless the United States of America. Amen. Please be seated. The purpose of today's ceremony is to recognize the commitment of the men and women you see standing in formation before you who have chosen to serve their country as soldiers. This review is the last official formation in the careers of two lifelong soldiers, and for our newer soldiers, the last of the training cycle. Not everyone successfully completes this difficult period of training, far fewer are able to accept the challenges and difficulties that come with the life of a career soldier. But those in formation today represent disciplined, motivated, physically fit soldiers who exemplify the Army's seven core values, loyalty, duty, respect, selfless service, honor, integrity, and personal courage. They are imbued with the warrior ethos and display the tenets of putting the mission first, never accepting defeat, never quitting, and never leaving behind a fallen comrade. This is an important day, and these soldiers can take great pride in their accomplishments. To the parents, families, and friends of these soldiers, Fort Jackson extends a very warm and sincere welcome. We are justifiably proud of our retirees' lifelong dedication to our nation and are truly honored that the next generation standing on this field have chosen to join our ranks. Please direct your attention to the left of the formation. The units marching today from your left to right are the 282nd Army Band under the command of Chief Warrant Officer 3, Kevin Pick. Graduating soldiers from companies Alpha, Bravo, the Battalion Color Guard, and graduating soldiers from companies Charlie, Delta, and Echo. Identified by their distinctive headgear, are the drill sergeants. These dedicated, non-commissioned officers form the backbone of the Army's training center system. Selected based off of professional competence, leadership ability, and years of service. These men and women undergo intensive training to earn the right to wear their distinctive hat and insignia. With the drill sergeant hat goes the important responsibility of molding civilian men and women into soldiers. The commander of troops for today's ceremony is Major Peter Aking, who serves as the executive officer for the 4th Battalion, 39th Infantry Regiment. He and the battalion staff or positioned on the field. The reviewing officer for today's graduation is the commander of the 4th Battalion, 39th Infantry Regiment, Lieutenant Colonel Jonathan Baker. On his left is Command Sergeant Major Michael Reyna, the battalion's senior non-commissioned officer, master trainer, and principal advisor to the commander. Uh, 
Guard the battalion is formed. Hardcore. No slack. The Commander of Troops will now bring forward the colors and persons to be honored. Competence and commitment are the hallmarks of professionalism. The soldiers and drill sergeants coming forward will be recognized for their excellence in training and duty performance and serve as examples to all. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the playing of the national anthem. It is important for our soldiers in uniform and all armed force veterans to salute the American flag. We ask our civilian guests to please remove your headgear and place your right hand over your heart as our national anthem is played. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, you're about to witness the retirement of two lifelong soldiers with over 47 years of combined active duty service. All soldiers begin their journey by graduating basic training. Over the years, there have been changes to how our, the Army conducts basic training. However, many things remain the same. It was during basic training that these two soldiers were first introduced to the Army values. It is where they learned the importance of teamwork and that the Army truly is a family. That sense of team and Army family is still embedded in what is done here today. Over 21 and 26 years ago, respectively, these soldiers took the same oath of defend this nation that your loved ones on the field have taken. We salute these great soldiers as they pass the torch of freedom along to the newest generation of soldiers, your loved ones standing on the field today. A certificate of appreciation from the President of the United States will be presented to those retiring today. It reads, I extend to you my personal thanks and sincere appreciation of our grateful nation for your contribution and honorable service to our country. You have helped maintain the security of the nation during critical times in its history with a devotion to duty and a spirit of sacrifice 
in keeping with the proud traditions of the military service. I trust that in the coming years, you will maintain an active interest in the armed forces and the purpose for which you have served. Those who follow in your footsteps will draw inspiration from your commitment, dedication, and sacrifices made to ensure the protection of our American freedoms. My best wishes to you for happiness and success in the future. A certificate of retirement from the Chief of Staff, United States Army, is also presented to those retiring today and to the spouses of today's retirees for their dedicated service to our nation. At this time, Brigadier General Kelly and Command Sergeant Major Oaks will recognize our retirees for their service to the United States Army. Sergeant First Class, Michael Commander. <laughs> Having served honorably for 26 years of service, is placed on the retirement list effective 30 November 2023. Sergeant First Class, Michael Commander, entered active duty in Fort Jackson, South Carolina, and will reside in Blythewood, South Carolina upon retirement. Sergeant First Class Michael Commander's fondest professional achievement was serving as an Army recruiter, helping young men and women alike to find their purpose, joining the Army, and making their families and communities proud. Now retired, Sergeant First Class Commander plans to become a JROTC instructor to continue to mentor the next generation while also spending more time with families and friends. The nation salutes. Michael Commander, Sergeant First Class, United States Army, retired. Star First Class, Warren Murdoch, Jr. <laughs> Having served honorably for 21 years of service, is placed on the retirement list effective 30 November 2023. Star First Class Murdoch entered active duty in Charleston, South Carolina, and will reside in Chester, Virginia upon retirement. His fondest professional achievement was earning the respect of his seniors, peers, and subordinates. He also is proud of being a family man, a husband, and a father, regardless of the demand of the job. Now retired, Sergeant First Class Murdoch plans to spend more time with family. He also plans to travel, fish, and attend as many San Francisco 49ers games as possible. The nation salutes Warren Murdoch, Jr., Sergeant First Class, United States Army, retired. Please join me in a round of applause for our retirees and their families. Although newly retired, they will always be part of our Army family.
the soldiers most responsible for the training of these soldiers are the drill sergeants, who are carefully, carefully selected by the Department of the Army. The drill sergeant campaign hat and badge have been a stoic symbol of professionalism and pride since 1962. At this time, the drill sergeant of the cycle from Delta Company, 4th Battalion, 39th Infantry Regiment, Staff Sergeant Bryce Young, we recite the drill sergeant creed. We ask that you we ask that all drill sergeants, past and present, please stand for the reciting of the drill sergeant creed. I am a drill sergeant. I will assist each individual in their efforts to become a highly motivated, well-disciplined, physically and mentally fit soldier capable of defeating any enemy on today's modern battlefield. I will instill pride in all I train, pride in self, the army, and in country. I will insist that each soldier meets and maintains the Army standards of military bearing and courtesy, consistent with the highest tradition of the U.S. Army. I will lead by example, never requiring a soldier to attempt any task that I would not do myself. But first, last, and always, I am an American soldier, sworn to defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, both foreign and domestic. I am a drill sergeant. Ladies and gentlemen, Lieutenant Colonel Jonathan Baker and Command Sergeant Major Michael Reyna will now present the awards. The outstanding drill sergeant of the cycle for 439 is drill sergeant Bryce Young from Fontana, California. The soldier leader of the cycle for Alpha Company is specialist Garrison Wolford from Wake Forest, North Carolina. The soldier of the cycle for Alpha Company is Private John Mangarillo from Springfield, Florida. The soldier leader of the cycle for Bravo Company is Private Zachary Sheets from Delta, Colorado. The soldier of the cycle for Bravo Company is Private Emery Payne from Huma, Louisiana. The soldier leader of the cycle for Charlie Company is Specialist Megan Turner from Waltham, Massachusetts. The soldier of the cycle for Charlie Company is Specialist Austin Toothman from Okmulgee, Oklahoma. The soldier leader of the cycle for Delta Company is Specialist Joshua Hodge from Knoxville, Tennessee. The soldier of the cycle for Delta Company is Private Andrew Rockwell from Houston, Texas.
The soldier leader of the cycle for Echo Company is Specialist Edward Hurley from Virginia Beach, Virginia. The soldier of the cycle for Echo Company is Private Samuel Castro from Hinesville, Georgia. Ladies and gentlemen, the commander of the 4th Battalion, 39th Infantry Regiment, Lieutenant Colonel Jonathan Baker. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning and welcome to the 439 Infantry Graduation Ceremony to recognize the United States Army's newest soldiers. I'd like to begin by extending a thank you and warm welcome to the Army Training Center in Fort Jackson, Commanding General, Brigadier General Kelly, and Mrs. Kelly. The Post Command Sergeant Major, Command Sergeant Major Oaks, our Brigade Command Team, Colonel Utlout and Command Sergeant Major Blyler, and Colonel Huttonen, as well as other distinguished guests, and most importantly, friends, family, watching virtually and in the stands. It's a great day to be part of the Army team. I'd like to acknowledge First Sergeant Retired Ed Hogue and his wife, Kathy. Ed served with this battalion in Vietnam as a squad leader in 1st Platoon Battle Company. He's a st distinguished member of the 39th Infantry Regiment and did two tours here at Fort Jackson, serving as a drill sergeant, senior drill sergeant, and company first sergeant. Ed, welcome home. Ed, Ed please stand. I would also like to ask all of our veterans here today in attendance to stand so we can give an extremely well-deserved round of applause to you as well. In any generation, it is those who are called to serve who are the guarantors of freedom in their time. Veterans, it is your legacy of service that delivered this moment of freedom that we enjoy. It is your legacy that established the profession of our Army, a profession that those who currently serve strive to maintain and strive to enrich. Veterans, thank you. For our retirees, Sergeant First Class and Mrs. Commander, Sergeant First Class Mur and Mrs. Murdoch, you now stand in the doorway between service of today and the legacy of our veterans. You have fought the good fight. You have kept the faith. You have finished the race. But know that your journey truly isn't over. Your service carries forward and continues on in all of those that you shaped during your time in the military. For all those who serve with you, let me say thank you. General MacArthur once proclaimed, we are not retreating, just advancing in a new direction. And I think this sentiment applies to both of you. You're not retiring, you're just moving out in a new direction. Thank you. For the cadre of 4th Battalion, 39th Infantry Regiment, well done. A total of 1,074 soldiers are graduating today from across the battalion. This is no easy feat for... <laughs> this is no easy feat for a unit of less than 150 cadre, and the results are incredible. Consider this, where once only one person stood, there are now more than seven others who have taken up arms to defend our nation. Let all those who wish our nation harm, all those who toil to suppress freedom, let them see what we do here at Fort Jackson and let them be afraid. 
Hardcore Battalion, you are living the motto this will defend. To the soldiers of the graduating class, you now stand on Hilton Field, and seated before you are two groups that from whom you are now a shared legacy. The first group is your family. Mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers, cousins, aunts, uncles. With them, others that perhaps only now you are beginning to appreciate. Teachers, coaches, friends, mentors, your family of choice. Whether they are here today watching online or with us in spirit, there are so many people who invested in you, believed in you, dreamed of your dreams before you arrived here at Fort Jackson. Graduating soldiers, be grateful to the family and countless others who stood behind you and supported you. Be quick to give credit and appreciation to those who've invested in you along the way. Honor them with your deeds and your actions. That second group are the veterans who've gone before you. Those in the bleachers who've stood here today for well-deserved recognition, those still serving in our ranks, and the others who once stood where you now stand. The steps you've taken, the steps you will take in the journey ahead, there's a veteran who's paved this way for you. Graduating soldiers, those who've gone before you have charted a map of service to the nation, a map that is a guide to the profession of our Army. My advice to you, check the map. When you are unsure of how far you've traveled, or how much further the journey will last, check the map. Regardless of the journey, take with you the map of legacy and you'll understand exactly where you are. There is a third group here with you today, the cadre that now stand on your left and right. They are soldiers with whom you now share a common bond of bearing arms to defend our nation. Soldiers who instilled in you the one thing that ensures you will pass on to the next generation our shared legacy. That is the Army values. Loyalty, duty, respect, selfless service, honor, integrity, personal courage. These ideals are your compass, always pointing you true on your course. Rest assured that you might not always know the destination, but you will always know the right path to walk. Carry your compass and you will never be lost. Graduating soldiers, this is not the end, but only the beginning. You have climbed this mountain, but, there are, but from this peak, you can now see that there are other summits yet to climb. Our nation depends on you in this moment. You are our legacy, and you are up to the task, I promise you. Enjoy every step. I wish I was going with you. Just remember, honor your family, be sure to check the map, and always carry your compass. Hardcore, strike strong, and victory starts here. Today's soldier is, above all, a warrior, adaptive, confident, and competent. As a soldier, you are totally committed to the warrior ethos, grounded in the Army values, and determined to destroy enemies of the United States of America and her allies. The United States Army's soldier's creed embodies this commitment. To the soldiers on the field, the uniform you wear at this, this moment is more than an outward display of your vocational choice. Your uniform is a symbol of a nation and an unspoken assurance to all who see you that you are willing and able protectors of the freedoms fought so arduously for by all who have gone before and those who will bravely come after. You have become what you set out to be, a soldier in the United States Army. The Soldier's Creed is your declaration of your unshakable commitment to the ideals this nation was founded upon and will continue to guarantee. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand as Private John Mangorillo presents a certificate of appreciation to the retirees and leads the soldiers standing before you to the reciting of the Soldier's Creed.
please be seated. consideration of those around you, we ask that you all please remain seated and in the bleachers until all soldiers have passed the reviewing stand and the conclusion of the ceremony is announced. As you are approached by the American flag, it is appropriate to rise and remain standing until it is passed to your right. Once the ceremony has concluded, family members of awardees may meet their soldier under the canopy located to the left of the bleachers. All other family members and friends, please meet your soldiers on the field once instructed by the narrator and respective companies. The 39th Infantry Regiment was organized at Camp Syracuse, New York on 1 June 1917 by transfer of veteran troop from the 30th Infantry Regiment. In December 1918, the 39th Infantry Regiment was assigned to the 4th Infantry Division and in the spring of 1918, sailed for France as part of the Army's expenditure force in World War I, enjoyed the battle for the first time during World War I in the now famous Enzi Marne Offensive. The regiment was later reassigned on 1 August 1940 to the 9th Division, which the regiment fought under in World War II. The 39th Infantry Regiment would subsequently participate in a myriad of key engagements to include storming the beach of Algiers, securing Utah Beach, and culminating in the Battle of Bulge and aiding the capture of Remagen Bridgehead. After a series of inactivations and activation, 4th Battalion, 39th Re Infantry Regiment deployed in 1966 with the 9th Infantry Division to the Republic of Vietnam, participating in Operation Palm Tree, the 1968 Tet Offensive, and the Battle of Plain of Reeds becoming immortalized as the Hardcore Battalion. The 39th Infantry Regiment was inactivated 25 September 1969 at Schofield Barracks, Hawaii, and relived from assignment to the 9th Infantry Division. The 39th Infantry Regiment was transferred 3 April 1987 to the United States Army and Doctrine Command and activated at Fort Dix, New Jersey then later departed Fort Dix, New Jersey for Fort Jackson, South Carolina, arriving on 22 August 1990, where the 4th Hardcore Battalion was subsequently activated in October 2017. Passing the reviewing stand is the commander of troops, Major Peter Ocking, and the battalion staff. The 282nd Army Band is commanded by Chief Warrant Officer 3, Kevin Pick. The Drum Major is Staff Sergeant Jacob Davis. Alpha Company is commanded by Captain Caroline Lorenzini.
first platoon is led by Senior Drill Sergeant Timothy Lorento and Trey.